Hello, this is uh, Mr. McLeod, and I am going to do a little demo showing you uh, what you're going to be doing for homework four, uh, and a little bit about how you are going to be using the three classes that are in the starter code. Uh, so the starter code basically is giving you a, a special type of uh, pane that can uh, show grids as uh, essentially under the hood uh, supported by a 2D array of rectangles that are shown and they are shown based on what is inside a uh, grid model. Uh, the grid model uh, is uh, a class that can be used to keep track of a 2D array of uh, any kind of object. So uh, the T here just means that it could be any type uh, and you declare what type it is when you create the grid model just like you do for array list. Um, in addition to keeping track of the 2D array of objects, uh, it also keeps track of an array list of listeners uh, so that any time the grid changes, uh, it calls uh, the appropriate method from the grid listener interface uh, that goes with that change, that uh, represents that change. So for example, uh, if a cell changed values, then it would call cell changed. Uh, passing which row and column changed and what was the old value, what's the new value, uh, and it's going to call that on every um, listener that's in the array of listeners. Uh, and since the listeners are uh, have to implement grid listener, it's guaranteed that they will have those methods. Um, all right, so the uh, Grid pane, again, it is, uh, it is a grid listener. Um, so therefore, uh, it can actually be a listener for the model, uh, which is going to keep track of the 2D array of Boolean values that we're going to keep track of in this program. Um, so notice in this case, grid model was declared as having type Boolean. So that means that this would be Boolean in that case. Okay, so that was a quick overview of kind of what we did uh, in class earlier. Um, so now let's get to what you guys are going to do. Um, so you're going to use these classes um, to create a program that's going to look something like this. Uh, so you will have a uh, area up here that contains the grid pane, um, uh, the boolean grid pane that will display rectangles that are either filled in or not depending on whether the corresponding uh, boolean value in the 2D array in the model is true or false. So in this case uh, um, it's filling them in red when they're true and white when they're false, uh, that is actually controlled in the Boolean grid pane class uh, by true color and false color. So right now it's red and white, uh, but if you called set true color uh, or set false color, you could change those colors uh, even on the fly, in fact. Um, all right. Uh, although in, in this program, you won't yet be using those. All right, so uh, again, let's go back here. So uh, if we call, if we press the clear button, it should clear all those values. So effectively um, set them all to false. So the way it should do that, though, is it, it shouldn't be doing anything with the rectangles. Instead, uh, you will be just changing the values in the uh, model to false, which will then notify the 
Boolean grid pane object that it should uh, update those rectangles to display the false color. Uh, well, it just notifies it that it's changed. What it does in response is change the color. And you can see that uh, down here. Uh, if a cell was changed, um, then it's going to set the fill to the new corresponding color. Uh, all right. So let's go back to this again. Um, if the other control that you're going to have is this slider, and as you slide it, uh, this is gonna, going to be uh, something you will have to implement. Uh, and it's uh, quite simply just when you slide it, it sets the Boolean grid panes uh, tile size to the size that it shows in the slider. So if you notice, there is a tile size property here, which can be set using a setter, set tile size, uh, which will in turn redraw all the cells to be the correct size. Uh, but still uh, using the model's data. All right, but they'll be the new size. Okay, so if we go uh, back here again, there's one other control, which is load. Uh, so in load, if you press load, uh, it, will, it should prompt you uh, with a uh, file chooser. Um, and uh, you, it's essentially what you have done in the past with file choosers, where you just select a file um, and hit open. And if you noticed the file that I selected, uh, that was this file over here. Uh, it just has uh, two numbers at the top row uh, that say the number of rows and the number of columns. Uh, and then uh, that same number of rows and columns uh, filled with X's and O's uh, that correspond to uh, true and false values. Uh, and it is up to you what kind of file reading method you want to use. Um, all right. So then uh, one other feature, the last uh, feature that you need to have is uh, when you click on one of these squares uh, in your grid, uh, it should turn all the neighboring squares uh, into their opposite value. So for example, uh, if I were to click in the middle here, all the squares around it right now are false. Uh, so they would all turn to true. Uh, and again, this is just in the data model, right? In the uh, grid model, you will change you will set the value at a row column um, and then automatically the grid model is going to update uh, the Boolean grid pane. Uh, so if we click here, boom, they all turned red because uh, they were all true before. If we click again, they're all back to false again. Uh, and of course, um, uh, if you click here, it's going to turn these ones uh, false and all these other ones here true. So that makes that kind of shape. Uh, actually kind of makes a cool shape if I click in all the uh, squares. And then actually, if I keep going, then I got only four little squares left. You can make kind of a game out of this. What kind of cool shapes could you make? Yeah, there's a cool one. All right, so uh, that is basically the program you are going to make and you can join me in the next video uh, going over uh, how to uh, the mechanics of doing some of the uh, uh, things that you need to do like the listeners um, and uh, mouse clicks and things like that. Alright, so see you in the next video.